Ferdinand Hodler is the most famous Swiss artist of the early 20th century. He's very much considered a national treasure. In Switzerland, Hodler is probably best known for his large-scale figure paintings because they decorate the stairwells in the museums and they have a very public presence in Switzerland. But I think internationally, Hodler is particularly well known for his landscapes. They are extremely beautiful as they sum up for us, for an international audience, all that you might think of, of the beauty of the Swiss landscape. But I think it's important for us to remember that he's not just a painter of beautiful landscapes. He often painted history paintings. He was proud of the Swiss history, of the strength of the Swiss um, economy, the Swiss political system. He was a proud representative of his own nationality. This is the first time that we have shown a Swiss artist in the Night Gallery. I guess we've shown Clay, but Clay had lived most of his life in Germany and had a sort of German career, whereas Hodler lived in Switzerland for the whole of his life and is very much thought of as a symbol of all that is best in Swiss art. But he had a very, very close relationship both with the Viennese and the German artists in our collection. He was a very influential figure on the international art scene. He exhibited in the Berlin, Munich and Vienna secessions and his work had a huge influence on many of the artists in the permanent collection. In our exhibition at the Neue Gallery we've chosen to focus on the last four years of the artist's life, 1914 to 1918. And View to Infinity is the title that we've chosen because this was the title of the last great figure composition that he made during these years. And he thought of this last great figure composition as a kind of summation of everything that he'd been attempting to do in his work. I think View to Infinity incorporates um, the whole of our exhibition. It also relates to his late landscapes, where he's looking out across the horizon to the sunset and the sunrise, and also the very painful death of his lover, Valentin Godidara. So obviously there are questions of immortality and mortality um, going on in this last period of Hodler's work. On the second floor, in the major galleries next to Adele Bruchbar and our Viennese collection, we've um, installed work that we felt had a particular significance and relationship with the Viennese artists in the permanent collection. On the third floor, we have done this very focused um, overview of Hodler's late work, the last four to five years of his life. I think of all Hodler's international relationships, the most important one for him was the relationship he established with the Vienna Secession and the Viennese artists and designers like Gustav Klimt and Joseph Hoffmann. As early as 1900, uh, Klimt and the Vienna Secession invited Hodler to show in Vienna. They were very much at this moment reaching out internationally across Europe to the famous artists of the, of the period. And Hodler really um, established his international reputation above all in Vienna. He showed several times at the um, Vienna Secession, and particularly in 1904, had a very large and significant exhibition of his work there. Hodler was very impressed by Klimt's work and we even went so far as to purchase one of his paintings, Judith Wan, uh, at the turn of the century in 1901. And Klimt was equally impressed by Hodler and even makes a quotation in his famous Beethoven frieze, which he designed for the Beethoven exhibition at the Vienna Secession. He quotes these angelic figures from a painting by Hodler called The Chosen One. So there was a very close um, artistic relationship between the two artists, but also a personal friendship and a personal mutual admiration, which extended as well to Hodler's relationship with Joseph Hoffman. Hodler had met Joseph Hoffman during this period he was showing at the Vienna Secession, 1900 to 1904, and they became friends. And later on, in just before the First World War, around 1912, he invited Joseph Hoffman to decorate his apartment uh, in a very um, prestigious address in Geneva, overlooking the lake. And Hoffman came and made furniture and really a whole decorative ensemble that. Uh, Hodler lived in for the last years of his life. 
He's an artist who uh, deserves to be talked about in the same breath as Klimt and other major artists of his generation. And hopefully this exhibition will help um, that recognition.